how infuriating would it be if this if this was how I started? If I just left it, I just leave it like this. I'm gonna. The premise of Footprints is this: you are the head of an asymmetric clan who's ready to brave across this giant landscape of ours. But because you're so quirky, you can only move on one specific type of landscape before you get tired and you need a little rest. As you move across these landscapes, you're going to collect resources that will help you move more efficiently across these landscapes. You're gonna learn more. You're gonna improve yourself. You can even put little outposts on the way. You can carve cave paintings along the way, all in the pursuit. I can't stand it. Uh, all in the pursuit of finally getting to the end of the track, racing into the new era. That's the theme. That's kind of the theme. What does the box say? Oh, you have to escape the because the ice age is coming and it, coming to an end and everything's melting. So you got to get out of the mountains or else you're going to get flooded. So get out of there as quickly as you can and leave some cave paintings along the way as you scream effortlessly into the void, hoping that someone will remember you when all we will remember would be the drawings. This is a bleak outlook on life, but it's actually a fun game. This I, was included recently on my top games for six players list. This game that plays two to six players. Six player games are hard to find, good ones even less so. So let's take a look at how this plays aside from the general premise. Watch your step. The boards aren't bowing, they're good quality. It's just there's a lip on my table underneath. Oh yeah, one of the most annoying parts about this game is that there's a little hexagon outline when you're setting up for your, your symbols and they all have to be, they're all askew. They're absolutely all askew. <laughs> Just don't, like, why? Why did it have to be that way? <laughs> Other than that, it's, it's a good game. Here's how the game plays. Every player is going to take the, one of these asymmetric characters. You're going to also take the deck of cards associated with it and you're going to pick one of your leaders in there. There's a special A and a B card uh, for each person. They give you a sort of a one-time ability throughout the game. And then everyone else's deck is pretty much the same uh, with some minor changes, which we'll talk about. The, the main symbols are down below here. That'll make up the deck. You'll also always have four options to choose from. Everyone's gonna put their little player piece on a home and you'll get a special starting little bonuses. The bonuses are either going to be resources, which will help you build things, or they're going to be little bumps to move you up on specific tracks. So in this instance, I've now just moved this ice area up twice, which will allow me to better traverse the ice. On your turn, you're going to pick one of these cards and you're going to do either the top action or the bottom action. The bottom actions are usually pretty consistent. Move and improve your abilities on one of the tracks. Uh, if you happen to cover something, you obviously get that thing. Uh, and then move one space of your choice. So I started here, I've moved one space forward. Easy. If there happened to be somebody in front of you, well, you could jump over them with that one space, because that's a special move. Or, and this is the action that you're most likely going to be using more of, or, or at least will help you traverse, traverse the entire landscape a little bit better, you can play a card for its movement ability. The movement cards will allow you to move on a specific terrain up to the amount on your board. So if I was here and I was going to use this one, I would get to move two spaces, because my track starts at two down here, two spaces on the sort of mire swampy sludge. And then in addition, you also get to put one space on a mountain. Now you could do this in any combination. If I was here and I wanted to go one, two, three for some reason, I could do that. The reason being why you might alternate is that anything you run over, you get. And getting stuff is always good. You can get these footprint cards, which will give you points, they'll give you sort of end game goals to consider. You can get fire cards, which are always good and give you a whole slew of special abilities. Or you can get resources, which you can use to build things on the map. Building things on the map also allows you to get whatever you cover. That's, that's the game. The first person to get to the very end will score a number of points and also trigger the end game. If you haven't gotten to there, you won't score the points at the end of that round. Along the way, in addition to building buildings, you can build these caves. There are a bunch of caves that are going to be around the outskirts of the board. And each one of these caves, you have one cave painting that you can, that you can use. If you're next to a cave, you can claim that cave painting as your own and get a special end game bonus condition. Lots of stuff will give you points. 
Getting to the end of tracks will get you points. Completing more footprint cards will get you points. Getting to the end of here will get you points. Extra resources will get you points. It's a whole mash of points, but most of it should be tied into these cave painting bonuses, the footprint cards, and making it to the end of the track. Where the strategy comes in for this game is balancing the amount of cards that you have, the resources that you have, how often do you push these tracks up, and how often do you blaze across the field. Because you'd love to be able to get this track way up here and be able to move 11 spaces on green if you needed to. If you happen to be over in this section, you could run all through here and, and really traverse a lot of landscape. But in order to do that, you're gonna to have to throw away a lot of these cards in order to slowly advance yourself up. And so strategically getting those fire cards to, to give you those bonuses, strategically running over different resources to build these, these tiles and allows you to spend resources to move these tracks up. There's a lot of different combos that are exciting. And it's also exciting that each clan is divvied out in a different way. This is the bird clan, for example. And you can see a little breakdown here. It shows you how many of each card you have in your deck. So this one, this bird clan is specialized in moving across the ice and moving across the mountain. But other clans may be different. Here, this buffalo clan has four cards for both greens, but only three for the mountain and two for the ice. And so this little bit of asymmetry combined with the special cards that you can use that might come up in your deck and you can use that ability makes for an interesting puzzle. And what's also interesting about the strategy is that each card can only be used once. This game will last 14 turns maximum. If you haven't reached the end by then, the game is over. You all drown. No, it's not like Clank. It's just whoever has the most points wins. But the asymmetry, everything provided by the asymmetry on the boards, the asymmetry that is provided by all the different... Uh, goals that you can be striving towards makes this a, a really fun puzzle. I also really like, similar to Take It to Ride, you have to choose if you're committing to that end game goal or not. If you get it, you get six points. That's, that's quite a decent amount of points. If you don't, if you're too bold, you actually lose points. And so what I like most about this game is that it gives a real sensation of risking it all. There's a huge aspect of boom or bust in this game, I've found. And, and I really like that in a game that only lasts 14 turns. Do you try to stock up on these footprint cards, which may really bite you in the butt? Do you peter ahead towards the end goal and forget about all these potential huge points that you can get by investing in the cave painting? It's a game that starts out very slow and then suddenly ramps up really quickly as people finally start hitting the point where they've developed their tracks enough and then are speeding through. It, it's people running across this, the, the pathways in effective ways, trying to maximize how they use their last remaining cards, keep holding on to those specific types of terrains so they can hit the symbols that they need to unlock buildings or to work towards their footprint goals or whatever. I quite enjoy that asymmetry of it, but the highlight for me, the highlight for me of this game is that boomer bust idea. It also feels like some of these cave paintings are a lot harder to achieve. And like this one, for example, feels like the obvious easy one. You can actually get 40 points just by hitting the end of the track as opposed to getting 15. This gives you an additional 10 points plus whatever you score, you get it again, I think. And so while something like this feels potentially a little bit more powerful than the monumental effort it feels to build all of your engravings to get even just equaling that that amount of points. I don't mind it. I don't mind that there is this race aspect. I don't mind that everyone should be pushing to hit the end because if somebody gets this and you're able to get something better and then end the game before them, it really does end up being that race to the finish and that all or nothing strategy that can happen. If you're dilly-dallying and you're trying to maximize resources or you're taking too many offshoots, there's one game where I, I really wanted an end game goal and so I ran over there to get it, but it was jammed into a corner and I had to use cards in a non-optimal way and then I found myself stuck. I didn't draw the right cards that I needed to get out of that terrain and, and it really set me back and I ended up losing by like 40 points or something like that. Whereas if I had had like one more turn, I could have flipped it around 
and had this huge point swing and, and, and taken it home. And so I really, I, I like that the game can provide that. I don't mind a boomer bust mentality when the game itself is fairly short. This one clocks in at around, I'd say 60 to 90 minutes. What does it say on the box? It says 30 to 60 minutes on the box. And with it only being 14 turns, especially if you're playing at two players, you could bang this out really quickly. I'm not as enamored at playing this at a lower player count than I am with a higher player count. I think there's a lot more excitement that can happen at a higher player count because with more going on, more of these spaces are getting covered. And if somebody is blocking a space, if you move through it, whereas you would have ordinarily gotten that resource, you don't get it. And so having it being a little bit more bunged up, uh, I think creates a different experience. It creates a tighter experience. And so I like it a lot more at that higher player count, which is why I think it's actually quite good at six players. With it being at six players, you have more competition for things. It's a tighter game. Then at two players, it's a little bit more wide open. You don't have to worry about everyone else's pace so much. You just have to worry about one person's. But yeah, it's nice. Uh, Production-wise, it's nothing fancy, but they still have dual-layer player boards. I don't know why more people aren't, aren't doing this. You don't have to have the thickest cardboard imaginable. This, is, this cardboard is incredibly thin. But it's nice to create this little dual layered feel. I think this is a really nice quality component and everything else can just be simple cards. It makes for a pretty affordable game and it's one that a lot of people I feel aren't talking that much about. I think that's a shame because there's a really nice race element here. It doesn't reinvent the wheel but what it does, it does quite well and it's a really fun fun experience that I enjoy playing for sure. You can get blocked, you can get super blocked if you don't plan correctly, but that part, that planning and planning out the best route. If you like route building too, there's similar strategies here while choosing the decision between leveling up your tech or not feels really good. The bonus cards are super important. That's one thing that I, I didn't recognize on my first play and now I highlight any time that I'm teaching it. These bonus cards are so powerful. They're so much better. There's such a better return than any other action that you can do. It's just objectively so much better. If you're not getting those bonus cards and somebody else is, they're just going to steamroll the game. But yeah, definitely definitely a really fun time. In terms of final thoughts and final score, uh, I would give this a, a hearty seal of approval. Solid four out of five. I can definitely recommend this game, especially for six players, and especially if you're looking for a game that has a nice tight race to it with some fun asymmetry thrown in there even with the wonky orientation of these symbols like it should be that right should it not be that and yet when you remove it you can see the outline it's not it's not that it's that which is just the worst thing ever <laughs> but yeah definitely a fun game and something that i'd be happy to play anytime people want to i think it's a really nice price keeps the component costs low and just delivers on a solid streamlined race gameplay with some manipulation of tracks and some lovely asymmetry thrown in there. So check it out. I I I really think you should. Uh, you should check out. Fo okay, I can't. Do it. Uh, you got to check out Footprints. This is by Chili Fox Games. This is my first title from Chili Fox Games, and I'm going to be on the lookout for more because it's quite well done. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Chris George. I don't have a catchphrase. And a fun fact about me is that I don't leave footprints anywhere I walk. Mud, sand, water doesn't matter. I just I don't leave a trace. I've never left a trace. Mm, one more thing as I'm packing up, I, I remembered. There's some spots on the board which have kind of a half and half in the art, and I don't think that's intentional. Uh, I think that's just a sort of art mistake or, or just flavor of things blending together so it's... It, it's not so exciting, but I, I kind of wish there were more spaces on the board that had that specific half and half. Like down at the end, you have a specific half and half and it says you can use either. And so this I found to be a little bit unclear on if you could use either. We ruled as no, generally when we played it. And I'll make a note in the comments if, if, I, if we did that incorrectly. But I, I would have liked to see more of that on the tiles. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention modular boards. So the setup's always going to be different. It's going to be a different puzzle every time. Like I really like that aspect of it. But I kind of wish there were those half tiles. There'd be something about it, something about the choice, the opportunity, planning those out, 
capitalizing on them would feel really fun. Uh, I think that would help elevate it a bit to, to the next level. But as it stands, still, again, really, really solid, enjoyable game. Happy to play it anytime.